Hello and welcome back to Tea with Tracy. Come and see you live every Tuesday at 12, spilling relevant tips, trends, and talk in all things real estate and home ownership related. Today we are continuing on with a series that we're going to be talking about the third Tuesday of each month throughout the year. That is the Making Busy Beautiful series. We're going to have joining us today designer, author, and speaker Holly Germati as she takes us through the next step in making busy beautiful. We all have busy lives and a lot going on. I feel like life is so much busier now than it ever was as I was a kid or when I was growing up. And maybe it's just perspective, but Holly's going to be bringing to us today the making busy beautiful trifecta. So she's going to explain how the trifecta will help to make our busy beautiful. Hi, Holly. Hi. How are you? I'm great. How are you? Fantastic. Thank you so much for joining us today. I know you're doing it from the road, um, you know, back to back appointments today. <laughs> Making so, busy beautiful, baby. Make, making it beautiful. That's right. Let's turn your sound up a little bit here. So can you hear are, me okay? I can hear you great. Yes, okay, good. Working the boards on my side. So yeah. if I ever decide to change careers out of real estate, you know, you never know. Maybe I'll do something in media and broadcasting. You're a natural. <laughs> oh, I'm having fun with it. So... <laughs> So making busy beautiful, we are continuing on with our series. And I know today we are talking about your trifecta, the trifecta. What is that? The trifecta. Okay. Based on who I am as a designer and a lot, years and years of personal experience, the trifecta of making busy beautiful is feeling great in your space feeling great in your style, meaning when you walk out of the house every day, or even if you're at home, are you feeling good about yourself? Or do you feel like you're, you're wearing something that makes you happy, that you're comfortable in? And then also, um, do you feel good in your schedule and how you're spending your time? Are you focused? Okay. Are you spending your time wisely and doing what you should be doing to stay happy? Okay. All right. Yeah. So your style, your schedule, your, um, how you're, how you're feeling about yourself. They're all important. So it all is, it kind of leads to, are you living like an authentic life, right? <laughs> like, are you, are you truly being you? Um, so yeah. so talk, talk to us a little bit more about each of those. What? Well, okay. You know, so really this is something that everybody can just take a little snippet of and just apply right now today. Right. Okay. Like, like if we feel, we all know that if we're like, just say, if you get up in the morning and you come into your kitchen and your kitchen, your sink is filled with dirty dishes and you've got clutter on the island and you've got shoes laying all over the floor, that probably is not conducive to right. you starting your day off right. Right. So really like that's the basis, even though I'm an interior designer and I love spaces to be beautiful and functional, it, this is more about like, let's make sure that you're waking up and starting your day. And when you're at home, that you're feeling good, that your space is serving you the way you deserve to be served. Right. It takes it, some work. It, it does. It definitely does. And it's not just on your part, right? If you share your home with others, I know I yeah. just recently had a conversation with my teenage son and said, you know what? Like I feel better when the family room is picked up and doesn't have all of your stuff laying everywhere. <laughs> yeah. So when you help put your stuff away and pick things up, it makes me feel good and less stress. And then there's more harmony in the house as well. And for sure. Uh, yeah, he definitely, I mean, that resonated with him. Um, you know, who doesn't like mom to be happy? <laughs> so. Well, and even, you know, if I'm working with clients or just kind of trying to develop, just trying to encourage people, create a system in, in maybe not just one room and a couple rooms or whatever, where you can at the end of the day, just do a five minute pickup, right? Like right. this is not about perfection. This is not Marie Kondo, mm -hmm. um, you know, <laughs> organizational ability. This is, are we capable of getting all the shoes to a bin? You know, right, like how right. hard, are, can we sweep the floor in a yes. minute? You know, like what can we do as a family in five minutes to just to just know that we're going to go to bed 
feeling like we're going to start the day off right. Yeah. So, so that's and, a little bit about space. And I feel that like the small things, doing them consistently, those yeah. make more of a difference than even, you know, needing to carve out those huge blocks yes. of time. Yeah, so, for sure. So yeah, your space. And, you know, from a real estate perspective, you know, that's one of the number one things that I always tell my sellers is clear the clutter, right? Yes. If you put stuff away, it actually, like, it not only makes your spaces feel larger, but as you said, it evokes that, like, feeling of, like, calm and peace. And yes. it makes somebody want to be in that space. Yes. So... All right, so space. So that's that's the first one of trifecta. And next yes. we have style. style. Okay. So, okay, so I am not a self-proclaimed fashionista by any means, okay? okay? I have my own thing. My thing is simple. I am a Jennifer Aniston follower, like, to the <laughs> nines, where if I could wear either a white t-shirt in the summer with a pair of jeans and flip-flops or black in the winter, you know, I don't need a lot of bling in my life to feel good. Yep. But I also am a huge believer of, of you know, uh, less is more and yes. investment pieces. And so for, for like everyday life or for your job or whatever, like whatever, whoever you are, right. know that your spent, that your wardrobe consists of things that when you put them on, you feel your best and you feel happy. Right. It's not about being like wearing the greatest of everything, but clear out the closet, get rid of things that you haven't worn in even six months, just get rid of it. And yes. then create maybe like 10 outfits that you know, when you put them on, you don't have to think about it, that you can just get dressed and leave and feel like you're in good threads. See, you now know, that like, is easier said than done, right? Because how yeah. many of us hold on to those pieces that were like, well, no, I have not worn it in the past five years. But <laughs> it's got to go. It's got to go. might be that occasion. Well, yeah. Or like the other thing is how many times, like I had this pair of jeans where they were super stylish and super cute a couple of years ago. Every, and they were new. Every time I put these jeans on, there was something about the fiber content where, you know, they were cotton blended with a little bit of um, spandex, but there was something else in that, in that fabric blend. And when I put them on, they itched. I mean, like I'd walk out the door and I would be going nuts. And even though they looked good, I, they weren't comfortable. Right. I mean, it, it's like, oh my gosh, let's be, be comfortable. Because if you feel comfortable, you're naturally going to be less irritable. And it's a little <laughs> thing. But if that's one more thing where when you have that favorite pair of jeans that you feel great and you're confident, if you're confident and comfortable when you leave the house, Yes. And if, again, this is a clutter issue, all of my, my trifecta all deals with clutter as well. If your closet <laughs> is decluttered mm -hmm. and you've got outfits pre-selected that you don't have to think about, you're saving time, you're yes. saving money because you're not buying things you don't need and yes. you just move on throughout your day and you're, you're the best you. Then yes. you get to be a better real realtor. You get to be That's a better right. mom. Whatever you're doing. And eliminate that decision fatigue as well, right? Yeah. I mean, you know, like these outfits work well together. So, okay, it's going on yeah. my my to do list to do my closet. So, okay, <laughs> we'll have to check in next month and see how far I got. <laughs> we we can do a live if you want. Oh. In the house. I'll come oh. to you. Oh, I'll I'll put. I, I will do accountable. We can do I some accountability. Consider that. Do I want to let all of my viewers into my closet? <laughs> we'll see. I will consider that potentially. Okay. Yes, we, we can. Do when we when yes. we do an episode on your wardrobe, yeah, we'll use your closet. <laughs> okay. Okay. All right. So all right. So your space, your style, um, and next we have your schedule, right? Your schedule. Yeah. Okay. So, so I okay. I was up against, like, this was my marathon back in the day, about 10 to 15, like, within the last 10 to 15 years, you know, I have five kids, two sets of twins, I had five kids in less than four years, and then we also lived in a large home, and it was right when the economy tanked, and so we had no money. So mm -hmm. I had to figure out how to make the most, the most of my time. I didn't have enough time. So every minute counted and every dollar counted. And, and I strategized 
for years. That is why this is so important and part of my trifecta because I became really savvy in knowing what I needed to spend my time on each week, each day, each hour, what was most important. Not that, and again, I'm not a drill sergeant, but I allow, I allow myself time to play and time to veg out, but I also know when to say no to things Mm -hmm. and, and also things like when to run my errands. I know better than to go to Costco on Sunday afternoon. Right. Like I'm, (laughs) but I'm also the crazy woman that's willing to get up if I have to and go to the grocery store at seven o'clock in the the morning on a Tuesday, you know, but, but it's about strategizing how to make the most of your schedule because how, like, if you want to spend more time in the gym, how are you going to do that? You have to schedule it in and how, you know, how can you save some time? What are we wasting time on? Right. Right. I think we waste time on running errands. I think we waste time on um, buying things that we don't need. I think we waste time on people. Sometimes we're overcommitted on who we're spending time with. Learn to say no. Right. Yes. Really honing in on what's important, right? Yes. Honing in on what's important. And then, like you said, certain things, it's not that you need to avoid them or not get them done but maybe placing them in a different part of your schedule is going to yes. really maximize your time. Um, you know, so I, I know like Absolutely. in my job, because my schedule is ever changing, which I know yours is as well, right? I, yep. I mean, there's different things that pop up. Some things get taken out. It's, it's a constant logistics, um, yes. you know, problem, if you will, to solve. And, mm-hmm. um, So yeah, sometimes moving things somewhere else. So that's a very good point. Most of us, I think, aren't always conscious of our schedules and what we're doing. It's just, oh, I have to get these things done and go through the list. But sometimes maybe moving things over, bumping one thing up, moving something else back to later in your week is going to really help. Yeah, I spent a lot of time running into strangers who would say, Oh my gosh, how do you have time to do it all? And I would, (laughs) and you know, in the back of my mind, I'm thinking it's because I'm not doing everything you think I'm doing. You know, I, I, by default, I wasn't because I had so many people and I didn't have a lot of resources, society, all the things that some, you know, that some of us at that time in space, like when you're, when you have young kids and you think, oh, they have to be in preschool or they have to join this group or they have to play this sport. Guess what? my kids didn't and they're all just fine. I right. mean, exactly. like there, are, yes. there are some things that you just don't have to do. Right. And, right. and yes. you have, and you, and you get to design your own life. It's, it's all up to you to make those choices for your family. Yes, absolutely. Like just a quick example. So just with my yeah. own family, my girls, they loved dance. Um, and my son too, when he was younger was in dance, but they all, the girls loved dance. And as they got a little bit older in a middle school, they wanted, there was the choice between doing recreational dance and competitive dance. Competitive okay. dance was a much more kind of like the travel sports. Like it was a huge yes. time and money commitment. And I knew with my job, with the way that I worked weekends and just I did, there was, it was not going to be possible to make that happen and to put that type of stress on our family. So it was, Mm -hmm. yes, you could continue dance. Unfortunately, no, you cannot do competitive dance. Now, my girls also were never going to be professional dancers where it was something that it was going to be critical to their futures. Um, And, and I feel that even with our kids, sometimes saying no to these activities, um, it does help them. They get to see, okay, Decisions need to be made. It's not yes. just everything I want to do happens. Sometimes Absolutely. we need to make choices. And that, so. yeah, allowing them to be part of that decision is yes. huge because yes. it is teaching them to view and make decisions based on, is this a need or want? If I do this, what's, what's my day going to look like? What's it right. going to mean for the rest of the week, what will I miss out on? And, and what do I, you know, what will make, what makes sense? Right. Absolutely. And I think we all need to allow ourselves the ability to just take those pauses and take a step back and re and evaluate. I, I mean, it happens. Yes. It's so easy to get wrapped up in the snowball of yes. schedule. 
Yes, yes. Jump. So. Like, you know, I've been using this example a lot lately, but being on the hamster wheel, right? Like it's very mm -hmm. easy to just get and keep running, 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 running. And it's like, wait a second. Like I want out of the cage, out of, off the wheel. I want to run in the field, right? So yep. what does that look like for each of each of us? What does that yes. look like? Yeah. So yeah, that's so great, great advice. Really yeah. like taking a step back, taking a look at your space and your style and your schedule and really making sure that what you are allowing into those aspects of your life, is it, are you being true to you and your authentic self and what you want your life to look like? Yes. So, yeah. I, yeah. Yes. And I think being true to those things is how, like you said, is how you will be, that's how you find happiness, true happiness. So, and it looks different for each of us. So it, it is, that's what's yeah. so awesome is that, you know, you can just take, and apply just a little snippet of all of this into your day to day and just feel maybe just a little more empowered or like you're just enjoying life a little more. Yes, absolutely. Well, thank you so much for joining us today, yeah. Holly, and for the next installment of Making Busy Beautiful. Thank you all for tuning in, uh, whether live or on the replay. And we'll be back next Tuesday with Tia Tracy. And if you want to catch the next part in the Making Busy Beautiful series, tune in the third Tuesday in March for the next next in the series. So, awesome. Can't wait. So good to talk uh, to you, Tracy. Have a good day. Great talking to you. Thank you, Holly. Thank you all. Right. all. We'll see you next week. Bye-bye. Okay,